Hola. Hola. It's Brent and Shannon here from Brent and Shannon's Excellent Adventures. And today we are going to talk to you about La Paz, our two trips to La Paz. Because mm -hmm. we did a little bit of a roundabout there. So um, before we get started, what do you want to ask these people? What do I want to ask them? Yeah, what do you want to ask them? You want to move to Mexico? No, you want to ask them to like and comment and subscribe. Oh. And share. Okay, well, you just said it. So, okay. <laughs> anyhow. Anyways, so today's video is all about our trip to La Paz, which is located on the east side of the Baja California, Baja California Sur. And uh, La Paz was a great trip. We had to go twice because we went there to book the ferry to the mainland which we could not do online but that's going to be a whole separate video about the process of booking the ferry and getting on the ferry um so that's a video so, all on its own yeah so we drove to la paz for the purpose of going to baja ferries which is located out in kishalink don't know if i'm saying it right um and we went there in person to book the ferry for our future trip from La Paz to the mainland. So, um, anyhow, we went there, uh, we tented in an RV park. Yep, okay. what was that sucker called? Maranatha, Maranatha RV Park. It's just um, out, it's just north of La Paz, it's like, it's not walking distance to town. So. Yeah, so it's a bit out of town. So if you're gonna explore La Paz, you would need a vehicle to get down to the Or a Malacan, cab, or they may even have buses, I don't know. Or a cab, or a bus, or uh, a scooter, or whatever. Um, but it's located a bit north of town. So not super convenient for seeing all of downtown La Paz, but for us, it worked great. We tried. <laughs> we tried to get one downtown, but it was not there. Yeah, you have to be careful with Google in Mexico because sometimes it will take you to a Walmart that doesn't exist, but you end up halfway up the side of a mountain. Yeah, um, yeah. Just be careful with Google. If it doesn't make sense, it probably isn't going to make sense and turn around and find the way. So. Anyways, uh, yes, we stayed at Maranatha, and um, that was a great park because it had uh, really great facilities. We stayed, I think it was $25 a night U.S. Um, we, no, it wasn't that much because we didn't have our so power and our water, yeah, we, so it we ended up being about $15, 15 a night. We had access to uh, Wi-Fi. We had access to great showers. We had access to the laundry. Um, so we were able to do laundry. It's coin laundry with um, US, US quarters, which you can get from the little office because by this time we're just packing mm -hmm. around. Places. And they had a nice area where you could do dishes and stuff too. So. Yeah, so it was some great camping. There was a, a lot of playground with lots of happy lots, screaming children. Lots, lots of happy screaming children. Uh, it was pretty busy when we got there, so we got a spot right next to the playground. But it really wasn't that bad. Those kids were good. There was a lot of European campers. Hey. Okay? Yeah, this is the thing. They 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 ship their units all the way from Europe and um, to Halifax, which is a, apparently it's about $2,000. Which is cheaper than you could But then they stay something. here for a year and travel, so it's not a bad deal. It's a lot cheaper than renting an RV from Canada or the US, let me tell you that. So yeah. that's what they're doing. And So some of these units that they bring over though, they're like these massive, rugged RV type things. Yeah, great they're, big tires, four like, wheel drive. They're um, called a man, M-A-N-N. -N. They look like a garbage truck. That's what they look like. Well, they? yeah, maybe, they're, but they're I mean, yeah, but they're, they're lifted way up high. They go anywhere. And yeah. 
pretty impressive units. Yeah, so we met a lot of Europeans that had those kinds of vehicles that and learned about, um, you know, what it costs to bring them over where they where they arrive and they just tour, tour Canada and Mexico and the US, North America and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great deal. So we saw lots of that and then um, we did take a trip into La Paz where you ate some of the best, we ate some of the best fish yeah. tacos. Yeah, right on the corner there was a taco stand and uh, yeah. there was a guy there who claims he's the best fisherman, the best captain. He's <laughs> We meet uh, some yeah, characters. Yeah, we meet some characters. He was something special, but whatever. Nice enough fella. Yeah, but he did tell us that those were the best fish tacos anywhere in La Paz. I think he said anywhere in Mexico. And they were amazing. Yeah, and they were spectacular. You know, when you're looking for food in Mexico, look for the things that, you know, it might be just a small corno, corner taco stand or something like that, but that's where you're gonna find some of the best food. Like, mm -hmm. this was just, you know, a little hole in the wall again, and um, they were amazing. They had all kinds of fixins out that you could add to your fish tacos, and this place, I don't remember the exact street, but it was located uh, about a block up from the Malacan and right near the Scotia Bank, and it had a big Corona sign on it. Um, I don't think there was right on the corner. Right on the corner. So that's where you want to go for the best fish tacos. Uh, we did then take a drive out to book our ferry, and while we were out there, we got our ferry all all booked and again we'll tell you more about that in another video we went to discover uh the beach called tecalote mm -hmm. and that was a fun fun little beach there's all kinds of little beach bars that line the beach uh you can get food you can get drinks you can sit on the beach and drink coronas all day and they'll bring them out to you if you want um beautiful little beach and it's also where a lot of the locals go so you see a lot and that's of, so cool yeah you know seeing the mexican families out and they're you know they actually go down to the water with their little buckets and shovels and they make sand castles and dig holes and the whole it's a whole family thing and so it like yeah a lot it's, of places where we go like we live in canada and you know you see a lot of parents they don't really do that with their children they'll say okay here's your bucket and shovel go play you know it's one th one thing that we have noticed is that you see more people of course they have the weather to be outside but you know what i mean families are really together having fun and spending time in the outdoors it's really really special to see yeah. and even late at night even you know kids are out late at night enjoying time with their families too and um so we were in la paz we got our ferry booked we did our two-day camping trip explored tecolote and then we had eight to ten days to go and tour further south before we had to come back to la paz to get the ferry so when we came back we had more time to explore the malacan and this is where we saw the families out late at night yeah. and, you know, uh, doing the markets. Kids are playing on roller skates and skateboards. But as far as the Malacan goes, it's, uh, how long is it? Was it five kilometers Five long. kilometers long. long. And uh, they really did a beautiful job, yeah. you know, with all the statues. And the, yeah. Yeah, it's really you know, and the little kind of markets and stuff along there it was just yeah it was really really clean yes la paz is really clean that's a good point yeah. to mention yeah you know a really nice nice climate you know it gets warm enough we're starting to find the heat once we get down to la paz um but very clean every couple of blocks you're going to find another sculpture that you can take a picture of uh there is a port there so you see some ships coming and going as well yeah fishing and, and everything else that goes along with the ocean yeah fishing right there off the malacan uh la paz also has a great nightlife which we didn't actually go out and take advantage of but um this is what we've learned that there's 
lots of happening clubs and stuff like that. And you can also find your little sports bars and, and everything. Yeah, they are everywhere you go, you can watch your Canucks lose anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's been doing every chance yeah. he gets, watching the Canucks lose. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's one thing they're good at. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, if you're into arts and culture, there's also a lot of museums and, and uh, places to go for that kind of stuff. So, a um, lot of diversity in La Paz. Now, what we did that has been on my bucket list since we plan were planning our trip was to go to Belandra Beach. Now, it's pretty special. I know Brent, well, okay, well, it's just a beach. No, I, I'm was, just saying that's all, I, that's all I heard for months before. Is that why you're smiling? You had, yeah, you, you had to go. Gotta go to Belandra? Gotta go, gotta go. <laughs> so glad we finally went. <laughs> well, he's just complaining now because I made him walk up that hill. But yeah, it was, it was pretty special. You could only go from what time to what time it was yeah. like, eight till noon yeah so on our first trip to la paz we drove out there and we tried to go there it's out near the ferry again and out near tecolote but um you can only get in on certain increments so you have to be there to get in for uh, a shift so eight to eight to noon you're allowed in and then they kick all the eight to noon people out and they bring a new batch of people in from, from one, one till, till five. five or whatever. And they just want to keep the area very protected. It's a very special area. Um, it's very lush all around there. So there's lots of lush vegetation. Mangroves. Mangroves and everything. But the water is <laughs> a color that you have never seen before. I mean, it is just crystal clear, turquoise blue. And uh, so you get in there. You don't have to pay to get in there, but they will stop you at the gate, tell you the rules about, you know, your garbage and making sure that you don't, you know, destroy anything. And they are watching. We saw oh yeah, the they're up on the, <laughs> the guy with guy the big bullhorn up bull on there. Horn. I don't know what he was saying, but Mexican, yeah. but he's yelling at people. There's certain places that they don't want you to walk to disturb the vegetation and, and things like that. But there is an amazing beach there, a couple of little amazing beaches. The best thing to do is to rent a kayak so that you can tour the whole shoreline. Hey? So yes. that was fun. My uh, Captain Captain Dick here. He uh <laughs> D Y C K <Yeah. laughs> He um took us took us out, paddled us around, he insisted on being the man and going in a two person. Yeah, and then we went out to that mushroom thingy. Yeah, there's a there's a feature photo place called Mushroom Rock and that's definitely where you wanna go. If you can walk out to it but you gotta climb over some rocks and stuff like that to get there so um it's easy just to kayak up and the kayaks were really cheap i think it yeah. was like i don't know five dollars or something like that to rent a kayak for the hour and uh tons of birds a great great viewpoint like i said i made them climb up this thing it wasn't um, bad i beat you up there i think you didn't beat me up there. I got a picture of you huffing and puffing coming up the hill. But anyways, that's okay. I needed a smoke. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyhow, um, I would suggest that you wear proper shoes. It wasn't the best little hike. The hike's not that long. It was only like just over five minutes. But it was a little sketchy in flip flops, so if you have running shoes, or yeah. if you have some yeah. better walking or some shoes, good sandals or yeah, flip yeah, flops, do don't do it. Up. So, and it is worth doing this short little hike to get the full impact of all the beauty. Of both bays, like there's two bays, there's actually other little bays across yeah, too. But. Yeah, there's like a bay, a bay, a bay, and you can see the whole thing. Uh, from doing this hike and it truly is spectacular i mean the color of the water I, we haven't found that color since but it's it's absolutely beautiful so um that was a must do when you're in la paz and then past tecolote which is right around the corner if you go further we didn't but there's all kinds of other great beaches there too so um, what else did we do in La Paz? We met up with Martin, 
uh, Martin is another realtor that I work with on Vancouver Island. Good um, fella, he's got a nice wife. Yeah, met up with him and his wife and went out to a taco stand and um, had some great authentic tacos, so that was great. And then we went looking for churros. Yeah, I'm not very happy about that. <laughs> He's been, been looking for these churros, churros everywhere. Tell them what a churro is. For a those churro, things. I don't know, it's like a donut, skinny, long donut thing. It's shaped like a star type thing. And then they put cinnamon and sugar on it. And they give you a, a little bag full of them. And they're cheap. And I don't know, people rave about them. So I've been trying to get myself some damn churros. <laughs> but I've been pretty unsuccessful. There's been times where I've thought, oh, look at the hot dogs. Oh, the churro stands right there. I'll just get a hot dog first. I get my hot dog. Look, and they're closed. <laughs> I just thought, I'm so, not leaving Mexico till I get a churro. Yeah. Or ten. <laughs> so anyways, there's churro stands all over La Paz, but apparently we keep missing them and uh, he's on the hunt for his churro. Yeah. So, so great street food in La Paz as well. Like, you know, it's it's really, there's a lot of modern things to La Paz in got that, a Walmart. that they have Walmarts. And what else did they have there? there? It's Home Depot. We had to go get an elbow for, oh, our, for, water, for our water jug. compressor. The great thing about going to Walmart in Mexico is that there is always somebody in the parking lot that will wash your vehicle yeah. for you. So this is great. You can pull up, we go and get our supplies for our next week of camping. And for I'm out. 150 about, pesos. Yeah, so five or seven dollars US you can have you come out and your vehicle is absolutely spotless. Tires spotless. are done. Tires are done, everything is done and you got your groceries you got a clean vehicle and and away you go but so, it doesn't stay clean for long no it there's, doesn't with the places we've been going so roads and... yeah yeah the other thing that you want to check out in la paz is the church the iglesias and it is beautiful so that's just a few blocks back from the Malacan and they've got the uh, traditional time, time square, town square, town square, <laughs> town square in Mexico. And um, you know, that's always something you wanna go look for. There's a La Paz sign. You wanna go and get your picture with sign. So there's a La Paz sign on the Malacan, but there is also one in the town square as well. They call them Zocalos. I think, I think that's right. So. Um, let me just look at my notes and see if there's anything we forgot to tell you about. Um, oh, I uh, know. Oh, yeah. That's where I got busted. You got busted. I went, I went up a one-way street. And, of course, people are like, yeah, I know now that I'm in it. I know. <laughs> this is what happens I'll just go to this next street and get off it. So I go up, get off it. I'm He's going down the wrong way. Another one-way street. Uh, pull you over. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, it was we were there for about twenty minutes with three officers and the the fella was really nice. He was kinda laughing at Brent and then but the two women were, were very serious yeah, well, about this. Well, yeah. But I don't think we got a fine. I think we just got a warning. I didn't see anything with a dollar sign that said we had to pay from what I can understand. Yeah, or else they the would have. I think they would have just made you pay right yeah, there. Yeah, but we haven't. And and that is a thing in Mexico that we've heard that you, know, <coughs> you can get out of most things, but there's usually a fine attached to it. And so we didn't have to pay anything on the spot right there. I believe it was just a warning. I guess we'll find out when we get pulled over next time. Yeah. So anyways, that, that, was, that was kind of funny um and then we had a great little airbnb as well this is one of the nicest airbnbs that it was we good. stayed in a really nice family that was there to greet us and we went through their house and then we have our own floor up top we had this great big outdoor kitchen this Stove, great big deck fridge and Wender, plants, fridge. plants all over the place and hammock Hat. You had a hammock, we had some rocking chairs. It was in a great location nice on a nice and quiet clean. street, but still walking distance to the Malacan. Running distance for me, not for him. 
Um, Taxi. It was it was really really nice. So we ended up having to spend an extra day there and the reason why is we hit a time our ferry was shut down for a day and that was because there was some uprising with some of the cartel stuff going on so all travel in Mazatlan. In, Ma in and out of Mazatlan was suspended for a day and that would happen to be the, the day that we had our ferry booked for so we ended up spending an extra night in this little Airbnb we got to travel on the ferry the next day, but it was a nice spot. I'd go back there and stay in that little Airbnb. Great, great family. And that one, again, I uh, believe it was $35 US yeah, a so. night. And um, great stay. Like we've been having having some really good stays. So um, let's see, what else do I have to tell you about? That we have to tell you about, we're kind of starting to babble on here a little yeah, bit. I think. I think we covered it. Yep. I think um, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that is it for uh, okay, good. for the buzz. Okay, all right. So, uh, if you have any questions or anything you need answered, reach out to us. In the meantime, like, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, we will talk to you next time. Adios, amigos. Adios, amigos, and amigas. Bye. Bye. Yeah.